basically uh, our son David, who was the representative for 10 years, but was deeply impacted by an experience he had with 9-11. With I think we all were touched by that, the, the Pearl Harbor of this generation. For David, it came three days after he'd heard a talk by a prominent uh, uh, a speaker from Britain who actually warned three days before that this was going to happen and talked about the Islamic world. He's an expert on it. He knows about it and said, what is happening? And David went home to this. And that led him to a real time of, of searching and prayer um, and a, a deeper understanding of the fact that uh, the, uh, it's, it's no longer the communists, but the, um, the dominant persecutors in the world today uh, are, are Muslims. In fact, uh, do you know how many Muslim-inspired uh, terrorist attacks there have been since 9-11 in the world? Mm -hmm. I want to guess the number is over 15,000 wow. and growing daily all over the world. The whole world is basically under attack because Islam believes that that's a that's a method, uh, which in one of David's presentations, and I think he handles it in the book. And I've got, by the way, I've got copies of the book for everybody, too, uh, that if you don't have his book, he prints out. Now, uh, <clears throat> you see, this, the 9-11 the, uh, was called by Osama bin Laden himself as the third jihad. Why? Because it was the third attempt to, of, of, in history for Muslims to try to Mm -hmm. uh, attack the West. October 10th, 732 is, is the date of the Battle of Tours. You, if you did history, that's one of, considered one of the ten most important battles in all of history. September 11, 1683 is the Battle of uh, East Vienna, the Vienna Gates, and once again the Muslims were stopped after a huge uh, inroads into the West. Um, and all this relates to, in, uh, which David handles very well in his book, is jihad, which is the word, the Arabic word for struggle, which Muhammad redefined as being uh, basically a holy war. But I'll go into it. Uh, David spent 10 years working for VOM. Uh, basically, he's a full-time employee, their representative. But as a result of the things that happened to him uh, and his experience in uh, 18 currently, he's been in 18 countries um, uh, uh, where are persecuted around the world, particularly in the in the 1040 window, which is shown on the map. Uh, <clears throat> well, he wrote this book after three years of work and prayer and struggle, and everybody in the family became a family project. We all edited it, worked on it, and gave him suggestions, not all of which he used, by the way, <laughs> but he wrote the book, which. Um, attempts to explain that uh, Islam doesn't have to conquer us, they only have to keep us in fear. And the, the, the recipe that God has given us, which we all contain if the Spirit lives in us, is fearless love, because perfect love casts out fear. So we all have a role to play, and as the church gains in, in fearlessness, we have a boldness, and ultimately the conquest of Islam is not going to be by the M16, but by John 316. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of, about his ministry now. Uh, the writing of the book uh, meant that the relationship with BOM needed to change, and so now he is basically like so many of them. There's about 16 or 20 BOM reps who are in the same, uh, BOM associate reps who are in the same position, um, including uh, Mujahid, and, uh, oh gosh, what's, what's his name? But there are several staff members who have done the same thing. There's a whole bunch of them out there who have written books and now have their own independent ministry. Gatano is one. Um, that's my mind. Is, but anyway, that, that his ministry is that. He speaks representing both uh, VOM and as an associate volunteer, representing his volunteer like the rest of us, and uh, his own ministry, Spirit of Martyrdom. Ironically, Sandy, the story I picked out to share, which I don't have time to tell the story. Um, stop, stop the timer and tell the one story there. Okay. Um, when we were in Egypt in 2005, we met the fellow who, the, who was so concerned because the three on the 
on your left side of the picture, including the fellow with the napkin on it, had, were all Muslim background believers. The one at the top of the picture was a terrorist who actually worked for a cell group, a, a Muslim cell, and basically terrorized Christians. He, in, in, in Egypt, throughout North Africa, they went, they bombed Christian businesses, they threatened Christians. He was so zealous growing up that as a young man, he even persecuted his own mother and, uh, and hassled her so badly that when he came to Christ, he had to go and repent to her. And uh, during the process of the time, his story of how he came to Christ was amazing because they were doing all this stuff and they, the, in the imam's suggestion, they weren't doing well enough. So he came to, his Christian name is Paul, came to Paul and said, um, I said, we need a new approach. So he said, I want you to get a, a Christian angel, the Bible, the New Testament actually, and read it and then write tracts and show how the his Quran is superior. Well, this placed him in a real quandary because in the first place, he found out that he didn't have the courage to go in and buy a Bible. In a, in a, so he paid another guy to go buy the Bible. And then he took the Bible home and he couldn't sleep with it. He couldn't keep it in his room. He had to hide it under something else. And, but the group kept putting pressure on him. His, his, his leader, his mom kept saying, when are you gonna have those tracks ready? We wanna do that. We wanna have a ministry and, and do that. And he kept procrastinating for about three months until finally the pressure mounted so much that he realized he had to get that book out. And in the providence of God, he opened it up to, to a verse in Isaiah. And he read one verse, and I, at this point I'm forgetting which one, one of those beautiful verses in Isaiah. And it's like the Spirit of God fell on him. And he, he, his testimony was, I, in that one verse, mm -hmm. I realized there was more truth than everything I'd read in the Quran. Wow. And um, he came to Christ, and now is, his reputation is such that it's dangerous for him. He has to, these three guys, the three guys on the, the left side of the picture have to live in hiding. We met them in a secure hotel. It's dangerous for them, even in Egypt, which has, as, as uh, Larry and Marva pointed out, has more freedom than a lot of places in the Middle East. Um, but um, anyway, it was one of the great privileges is at the end we held hands and, and prayed together. And it was one of those times where the prayers, the Spirit of God was just a, a wonderful, beautiful experience. And then I gave him a Christian hug. And as, as David says, you know, I said, uh, Paul, he said, I'm grateful that uh, it was, this wasn't four or five years ago when, when I met you and you hugged me because it might have been, as he said in his commentary, he had actually slit four Christians' throats before repenting and coming to Christ. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what's happening. His story, the whole story, is, is even more amazing. You can read it in this book, which is available from VON Into the Den of Infidels. And I commend it to you as just a little picture of what's happening around the world. And part of our calling as VOM representatives is to be modern day Paul Revere's. Mm -hmm. The Church of Jesus Christ in the United States is a sleeping giant. There are 340,000 churches in the United States mm -hmm. of America. Now what would happen if the Spirit of God fell on them and woke mm -hmm. up that, mm -hmm. that we could practice fearless love in our lives mm -hmm. and, and would sound the alarm that the calling to wake up and, uh, and live for Christ in a way that can impact. Mm -hmm. The resources we have, as Daniel has so beautifully demonstrated, we can have a, a guy from, from Michigan who's going to North Africa speak to us. We had in this room a voice from, from India speaking to us yes. over modern technology. It's incredible the resources God. The modern ancient Roman roads, which the missionaries traveled, modern technology that we have available, cell phones and these computers and these hookups, give us the resources we need to help share the gospel. Daniel's own mom has witnessed to what, where was she, from India? She's no, through all Skype? Over, all over the place. All over the place. She witnesses on Skype. There's just incredible resources out there that we can uh, speak the word and call people to uh, faith in our Lord Jesus. May it, may we do so.